All right, fixing to drill some holes in the back of this boat. Um, Hog Rider asked me to show him what I meant by this. Well, this is a a template. Years ago, they're all standardized where these orange Weehaw! where these orange uh, holes are marked. Anyway. Um, Years ago, when I started to say, the uh, manufacturers all had different bolt patterns, like a Mercury or a, or a Ebenrude. Ebenrude and Johnson, of course, be the same. But now everything's pretty much standardized. So, I've already cleaned the back of the transom. And uh, now, if it's not centered, the motor isn't centered, you know, an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch one way or the other, it's not going to matter. The biggest part is you don't want it cocked one way or the other. Which in this case, this, this is pretty flat, pretty straight. So, with that just hanging on it, I'm going to hang that on there once I find out where the center is. And then I'll clamp it, and then I'll drill some holes. But the important part is just to get it measured, both sides to center, and then uh, go from there. All right, let me get some things set up here. Okay, I've got uh, got my stuff out here. Um, the first, where you can see this to set this up to center this, this is two and a quarter inches. So what I did, I measured down. This is the center rib. Measured down and put a line from that center rib right here. And I measure down two and a quarter inches and put a line across here, which covers the whole part of the center. And between, of course, this tapers here, so you can't, you know, it's hard to measure on a taper. But I checked it out. These welds are pretty much in the same place. And I measured from there all the way across, all the way across to the other eyelet that's welded. And there, um, it's just a fraction under 66 inches. Which is no problem because what I can do, I can go 33 to there, 33 to there, and whatever little bit is, I'll just split the difference. I mean, that'll be for all purposes in our, our you know, for my needs, that's going to be, that's going to be spot on. So anyway, let me go ahead and measure it and make a mark there. And then we can always check it. Okay. Um. These are actually, when I got to looking at them, these are not welded exactly the same, imagine that. This one's actually turned out just a hair, and this one is turned straight or in just a hair. So, what was happening is we were coming up here, different places. Well, this is the center rib. I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually twisted a little bit to my left. Um, so what I did is I checked the measurements from here and here and it lines up with this big mark. So that and that is pretty much centered. Of course this this I don't know if you can see that. But anyway it's twisted just a little bit which is normal. I mean it ain't perfect but that is pretty much dead center of this transom. So the next thing to do is just line this mark up here with this vertical line, the big one, and then clamp it with these clamps and drill the holes. Might have a good used uh, pon or pontoon, uh, aluminum boat for sale here real cheap in a minute. Let's see how things go. Here's what I did. This is all set and clamped. Then I measured from here to here, here to here. And it's right at 33 inches. So that's good. Then, let me grab it real quick. I took a four foot level, and I didn't use it as a level, I just used it as a straight edge. You can see this mark down here. Let me get over here out of this, get my shadow out of the way. See that mark right there? I lined up these two little uh, points 
and then just use this for a straight edge, like yay, and marked it, okay? So after I made that line, I measured from the end here to here and from there to there, and it's the same. So this should be fine, and it's clamped, sitting dead on the transom, and it's clamped so it can't move. I just got to remember to hold the drill a little bit down at an angle and make sure it's straight this way and just a little bit of an angle down because these transoms, see there, they've got an angle, leans back a little bit. Anyway, that's it. Okay, there they are. There's the four holes. And if any, <laughs> with any luck at all, they'll be exactly right for the bracket. Which I've got right here. It's a heavy duty aluminum jack plate. It's just a manual jack plate. It's got some adjustment, but what I'm going to attempt to do is turn it around and use it backwards because I don't need to go up. I need to go straight back or down. Straight back is probably going to be fine. All right, let me see what I can do. I need to figure this out here, and then I'll show you what I do, or what I got. Okay, so far so good. Um, it's working, but I may or may not have to do something else to it. Um, I just got to make sure, I mean, it, it all looks good now, but I got to make sure I'm going to just mock this up and not set the silicone or anything yet. And then I'm going to cut some uh, marine plywood, since this is a clamp-on, not a bolt-on motor. I'm going to put two layers of three-quarter inch plywood here, screw it down. What I'm worried about, I can measure the distance between... Got this on a tripod, sorry about that. Distance between here and here. If this is going to clear here, if not, I may have to raise it up to this last hole and trim this off flush wherever it is here, which I don't have a problem with that. Um, it was a hundred dollar bracket, I mean, it's not like it was one of those real high dollar four or five hundred dollar brackets or higher, so thousand dollars or whatever they are now so anyway that's what I got to check um, that should be it um, if it doesn't clear of course I'm gonna have to raise this bracket up and then this will be sticking up so I'm gonna have to trim whatever sticks up over this so it'll anyway that's the plan anyway uh, we'll see how everything goes I'll let you know. That's mounted. It's not uh, it's not siliconed in or anything. I got the boards cut for the to go inside here, across here, and I'm gonna set them in there, mark them, and drill them, and kind of get them set up. There's some silicone on that. I've got three boards. Then I'll go one, put it on there, squish it, kind of line it up. Another one until I'm done. We'll clamp them together and then I'm going to screw them with stainless screws. Uh, hopefully not in the way of where I'm going to have to put the bolt holes. Alright, that's it. Let you know when I got it close. Okay. I got the transom insert cut out, or the, I guess you would call it the jack plate insert. And there's not enough room to get in there between there and the because of the thickness that's got to go down here on the uh, the motor bracket that goes here so I etched out that one one layer of the uh, plywood there which won't matter and it's all painted uh, ran into a snafu here I went ahead and started putting the uh, silicone and tightening these down well, the bottoms, these are three and a half at the top. 
and the bottom bolts are are three inch but I used a three and a half saw you know just to snug them up but I guess what happened this thing bottomed out and you cannot get it loose I tried an impact over here which has got a hammer in it I also tried a big long whatever that is what 18 inch breaker bar and still couldn't get it off so I just happened to buy these I bought them for something else these if y'all do any plumbing or anything like we're working with old cast iron sewer pipes or anything like that this is the blade you want for your sawzall they're Diab uh, Di Diablo uh, steel demon and they're carbide tip and they're made for cast iron which is almost impossible to cut with anything else um, and stainless steel so uh, I haven't cut any stainless steel with it but I'm fixing to get down here to see if I can hold that and cut that off with that uh, Dewalt over there so I'll let you know how it goes oh, there's always a snafu that's just part of it and once I get this bedded up I'm gonna put it up and put the clamps back on it and then drill the holes and and uh, I'll put this insert under there Put the clamps on it and drill the holes. I don't think I'm going to have to drop it down. I've gone back four inches and the rule of thumb is every four inches you go back or every inch you go back is an inch you can raise it. Since I was three and a half inches from the bottom of the boat to my cavitation plate there then this should be just about right even, even level here. I'm going to run it up level with the back here. Um, but we'll see. Uh, if it doesn't work, I've left enough room to drop it about a, whatever that is, an inch or so from here to here. I, I'm, I marked these holes and, and just kind of pilot drilled them so I can at least go down that far. Uh, just move the whole plate down, not the motor. We'll see. Hopefully that'll work out. I'll let you know in a minute. I tell you what. That was amazing. It was less than two minutes to cut through a half inch stainless steel bolt. Let me get something where I don't burn myself. And there it is. That's the bad boy right there. I can't believe it. I've never seen a blade work that good on stainless steel. I'll remember those. They're expensive. They're uh Thirty-six dollars for for three blades, but hey, if it cuts that good, I could have worked on that for an hour. Other ways, trying to cut it and changing blades and burning stuff up. All right, I'm a happy. Okay, it's on there. Um, I'm gonna have to get three more three and a half inch bolts. Uh, three inch just ain't quite enough to get the locking nuts on there and a. I'd like to get some flat washers on them too. Uh, yeah, if that doesn't work, you know, I can always drop it down to here and move this whole thing down. But what I'm going to do is just set that on there and mark it. And then uh, call it good. I might do, I don't know, i got to think about this. What I might do is throw this up here on this. Upside, you know, laying on this part. Laying on this back here. Upside down, basically. And then I can take this and center it. And then mark it there and go ahead and drill it. And that should work too. I don't know, we'll see. It's uh, late afternoon on a Sunday. I still got all this to put up. This boy is done. I've done chain shirts three times. Had three breaks with multiple glasses of water. And I got to still pick all this garbage up. I was going to mow today, but you know what? But that don't happen. Anyway, it came out pretty good. I think it'll work. Uh, push comes to shove. If, if it you know, if it ain't low enough, I can lower this one notch. If that doesn't work, I'll take this over there and put it through the 
saw measure and cut off what I need to cut off here you know to drop it down more if I have to but in theory that should work huh. always thought it should have worked I don't know if I shouldn't just go ahead and I don't know I might just lift it up there and put it on there just to see where it where it is right now uh, it's I don't have any nuts on those bolts but It'll probably stay there long enough to figure that out. Alright. That is it for today. Um, I was thinking of something else. What, what, oh! I looked at the registration for this boat. And you know Randolph Relic Recovery. Well, I think the numbers, if I remember right, are 5151 RR. How about that? That's too funny, I thought. Anyway. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.